Furthermore, it is clear from what is said later that their goal was to know the mind of the Holy Spirit in this matter. Acts chapter 15 verse 28. The Jerusalem Council is a reminder to the Church of Jesus Christ today to go back to God's way of seeking the mind of the Holy Spirit on the issues confronting the doctrinal purity and the practical peace of the body of Christ, namely by God-appointed elders in deliberative assemblies. The way the discussion unfolded in Jerusalem is the most vivid recommendation for God's way to solve the challenges of the church. And so after much discussion, Peter rose and proceeded to demolish the Judaistic viewpoint with arguments drawn from his own experience of the ministry to Gentiles. He first described the conversion of the Gentiles as the work of God. It had been God, not himself, who had determined that through his lips Gentiles might hear the message of the gospel and believe. It was certain that God had accepted them because he had given the Holy Spirit to them, just as he had to Jewish believers, and this was proved by the Gentile Christian's faith, which was no different from the Jewish believer's faith. He then rebuked those Jewish Christians who would insist on human works, in this instance circumcision and the law, as necessary for salvation. They should have known better. Their fathers couldn't bear the yoke of the law, it could not save them, they could not keep it. To suggest that this same yoke is necessary to being recognised as a true believer in Jesus Christ was in effect to deny their own profession of Jesus Christ as their saviour. Worse still, it was to try to test God, that is to challenge his ability to save lost people by grace through faith in Christ alone, to make any action, however righteous in itself, an instrument of the justification of a sinner before God, when God has made it plain by precept and experience that it is by grace alone, through saving faith in Jesus Christ alone, is to contradict the very essence of the gospel. Faith is in a category all of its own. Faith is not a work. It is, to be sure, the act of the human heart casting itself upon the Lord, but it is pre-eminently the gift of God, as Paul later says, so that no one can boast. Rising to a glorious crescendo, Peter declared emphatically the very heart of the gospel, salvation is by grace alone, both for Jew and Gentiles. Jesus' yoke is easy, and his burden is light. There is no place for the yoke of law, which would only condemn us. The two missionaries, whose labours had largely occasioned the controversy, supported Peter with testimony to the miracles attending the ministry to the Gentiles. These showed that God was working among them, just as he had been doing among the Jews.